Hello everyone, and I figured we would get started for real this time. So one of the things you're going to need to do for this class, um, you're going to need a Cloud9 account, which you can get to, you can get by going to c9.io, and there you can get an account, it's free. Cloud9 is an online IDE, so it's a text editor, um, you can run Python from there, it'll even serve your Flask website. So you need that because um, it makes it a lot easier for me to, hold on, just checking my stream health. Um, it makes it a lot easier for me to help you if you're having issues. You are going to need to get a GitHub account. It's not strictly necessary, but it might make your life a little easier if you sign up for GitHub. Also, you can use GitHub to log in to Cloud9, which makes things a lot easier down the road. So what is Flask? Flask is a micro framework. Um, hold on. Let me bring up their site. Flask is a micro framework, which is a term I'm pretty sure they're, they made up, which, you know, it's tech. Who doesn't make up their own terms? What a micro framework is, is um, basically it's this really lightweight way to make um, something. And in this case, it is a way to make websites. So you can take Python and you can just go ahead and create websites with it with just a few lines of code. And it's probably the, one of the most lightweight things I've run across so far. And you can, it's simpler than Django. If you've heard of Django, which many people in the Python world have, uh, this is much simpler than Django um, if you want to roll your own website. And we'll get into later in the class when you should choose another framework and when you should choose Flask. Now, this class is also going to be using Git quite heavily. And Git is a way to version your code. So basically, you can save your code at any particular point in time. And the reason I do that is I'm actually going to take people back. I have a whole repo all the way up to a fully built out app. And I'm gonna take people, everyone back to the beginning of the repo and slowly build up the app. The reason I do this is because I just spent too much time um, tracking down typos in other people's code as they try to type in um, what I had done. So this is basically me cheating. Um, and it'll also allow you to any point along the way, mess around with the code, change stuff without screwing up the entire repo, without completely backing yourself into a corner. Um, it also allows you to save to a remote repository, in this case, GitHub. Um, GitHub isn't the only place you can save a Git repository, which a repository is a basically a collection of your code. It's not the only place, it's the place many of us use, but there's also a few others. Um, I'll cover that in the later class, because this is the 30 second intro of what Git is. And as we go along, I will show you the commands um, that we'll have to use. So basically, we've gone over what Flask is, we've gone over a tiny bit of what Git is, and now what we need to do is to set up our workspace. Now we need to stay on this page. So if you go to Cloud9 and you go to your dashboard, it should look something like this. Um, I have more workspaces because I use Cloud9 more, um, but you know, you can do, you know, so, but yours should basically just have create new workspace. So you'll want to click on create new workspace and you'll get something like this. You need to give it some kind of name. So I'm going to call it Flask C9. You can call yours what you want. You probably can only do public repositories. That's fine. Nobody is going to come and like mess with it. And here, um, I think that the best option here would be to clone from Git. Now, when you check out a Git repository, it's called cloning. So I'm going to go to my Flask class, which I'm going to post in both the chats. Do, do, do. So on this page, you see lots of things. And I'm not going to cover everything because, as I said, I have a Git class that I'll be teaching. And we could spend the first hour just on Git. You're going to look for this URL. And it looks kind of like a, you know, address. It's not quite a URL. You want to take that and you'll want to copy it. 
and you want to paste it here under clone from git or mercurial. You want to go ahead and create the workspace. And I get these pop-ups because I have a special add-on that prevents me from closing my workspace by accident, which anyone who's seen my previous classes knows that I do that at least 20 times in a class, that I'll accidentally close my workspace. It'll take a minute to build. Yours might take a little bit longer. And here we go. What you should see is the name you chose, um, a folder called Flask Class, a license, requirements, that kind of stuff. Let me do a really quick tour. Get up there. Get up there, head. A really quick tour. So this is your editor. So you can open a file in there. You can actually open multiple files. So this is your editor. Um, down here is your terminal. This is where you're going to be running commands. And you can make it big. And you can make it big by just clicking on this little box over here. And if you click it again, it goes down here. And if you accidentally close it, which I will often do, you can go to Window, New Terminal. It'll bring it, oh, kind of brings it back. And that used to work. Anyway, New Terminal. So it brings up a new terminal window. So this is what everything should look like. You should have, you know, be able to have some files, have your terminal. Just go ahead and select custom. So for anyone that doesn't have a Git key, which some of you may have, some of you may not, um, go ahead and just create a custom workspace. It'll create a new one. this time just go and get this over here once again go ahead and get this text and down here get clone You want to do git clone that URL and ta-da, you have it. You'll just have a slightly different directory structure, but so that'll get it as well. I would prefer it if you can do it the first method, but if you don't have time to set up the SSH keys, which I don't blame you, go ahead and use the second one and that one should work. Now for the first part of the class, all I'm going to do right now is bring this up. This is my terminal window. This is not my code window. Um, but I'm going to bring this up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back in time with my git repo. And one thing you can do is if you do git log, there, you have to cd, cd, flask class, um, you'll want to cd into the directory flask class c9, which depending on which method you used might be one step up from workspace or two steps up. So here I am and if you do ls, you should see that you have license flask class requirements.txt. That's how you know you're in the right directory. If you do git log, you see all of these like, you know, commit whatever, a comment, these are basically going back in time, all the things, all the code commits, all the changes that I committed, that I chose to push. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the very beginning of my code. Now the way you check out a certain commit that you take the code back in time 
is you do the following command, git checkout, and then this hash. And I'm going to put this up bigger on the screen so everybody can see it. But it's a certain hash um, that's unique to every commit. So I'm going to check that out. And you should get something like you're at a detached head state, you know, yada yada. There's just going to be all this stuff, all this text. If it says this, you did it right. And I'm going to do git clean rf. Now, git clean dash f. Hold on. D. Okay. If you do an ls, there should be one file, run.py. So here is what you need to do. These are the commands you need to do. Git checkout master, which I didn't show. That's something you're going to have to do in the future. Git checkout master, git checkout hash. Um, and this specific hash, 19357A7, um, and git clean fd, because that'll get rid of all the folders and stuff that aren't in the directory. So let me make this little again. Go down. There you go. And I'm going to open run.py. Close the readmes. Don't need them. And let's talk about what is going on here, because first I'm going to run it and show you what happens. So when you run it, you should see something. Ah, it's not going to work yet. So if you go over to run.py and you try to run it, and you're going to be running it using the green run button at the top, you see this trace back most recent call, no module name flask. Have an installed flask, of course, completely forgot that. So the way we're going to install it is you're going to type the following command, sudo pip install flask. You're going to see all this. Now, a note about sudo. I'm using sudo. Uh, sudo means do this as an administrator. And in general, that's not the thing you want to do. But because I don't want to teach a class on virtual environments and all of that quite yet, we're just going to use sudo. But you only really want to use this in an enclosed environment like Cloud9. So here's the next sudo pip install flask. So go ahead and pip install. It shouldn't take very long. But that's what the command looks like. So we have installed. And we are going to run this file again. And this time, ta-da, it's actually working. So this stuff you can ignore. Important, important, you can ignore that. That's fine. And this is the URL of your site. And this is just temporary. This isn't something you could hand out and just use. It's only up for a little while. So, and let's go there. And all it says, I'm going to make this super big. It says, hello world. That's it. So how did we get to hello world? So what is every, I'm going to go over every line of what this very, very short 15 line bit of code is doing. So import OS. Um, we need OS to get some variables from the system. And that's something you only need to do if you are using Cloud9. So, but the real meat starts here. From Flask, import Flask. So we need to actually import Flask app equals flask underscore name that actually creates the flask app that's like this is the thing that we're going to hang everything else off of so this is the actual you can almost consider this like your website app dot route routing is basically 
um, the URLs. So you might have like yourdomain.com, yourdomain.com slash blog, yourdomain.com slash blog slash 2016, you know, then slash December, you know, then slash 15, that kind of stuff. That's routing. So routing tells the browser, tells the app, like where it should direct people. And here, just the slash is the base root of the directory, which, sorry, this way, I'm mirrored in the video. Def hello, we're creating a function and we're just going to return hello world. This up here is called a decorator and decorators are really cool. They're very powerful. You see them in many frameworks. Like I actually can't think of a framework where you wouldn't see a decorator. A decorator adds extra functionality of some kind to a function. Um, so even though def, you know, hello, the function hello is just returning hello world, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on now that we just don't have to worry about. If name equals main, you might have seen this in other Python scripts. This basically means if somebody ran this file, um, that's all it means. So it says if somebody's running this file, instead of like importing it, do this stuff. The next two lines are just for Cloud9. Um, port and just, it's getting the port, it's getting the IP, those are internet stuff, so you know, what's the physical location of the machine and where are you allowing us to talk? Um, and this very last line, app.run, is something you would have in every run file for Flask. So app.run, port equals port, host, host equals hosts. If you were just running this on your local machine, um, it would say app.run parens end, like that would be it. So, stay on this page. Oh, this is the best add-on ever. Um, so that is what this file is doing. In the next video, we are going to add templates and variables to our application to make our website just a little bit smarter. The link to the video should be below, so I hope to see you there.